AK is looking likely to be the next big thing that's going to be sold to us in all consumer products, thanks to the likes of Canon and Samsung. But raw video is the other thing that we're going to see more often in cameras, and I think this could be a lot more useful to more people than AK right now. Here's how and why and what. And another question, but first, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes which you can join in on or be the one to teach. So if you want to take the next step in your creative journey, then check out Skillshare. Raw, oh, sounds good, but before you dump down the dollars on the next new camera, what exactly is it? Yes, what is it and why do you need it? The simple explanation is so simple, it's almost patronizing. It's just like raw stills versus JPEG stills. You get your raw data from the sensor. Yes, you'll get a bigger file, but the benefit is that you can fiddle more of it in post. Exposure, color, less potential for artifacts. Whereas a log file is flat and desaturated, you still have things like white balance baked in. Mostly the idea is that you can adjust white balance easier like with your raw stills because raw video is like a stream of raw images. It is so raw that shooting raw with some cameras will just give you a load of DNG stills. It's not even pieced together as a video. It's literally all of the frames of the video separated into raw images. Seeing a folder full of raw stills when you thought you'd be getting one nice clickable watchable video is kind of alarming. It's like some Edward Mybridge shit. FYI, he was the OG of moving images. And pre-porn perversions apparently. This is Two Dudes Fist Action and this is Bendo Victorian Edition. But look, not all raw video is seemingly such a pain in the bum holio though. Nikon Z6, Panasonic S1H, EOS R5 all presents that rawness in a pleasingly packaged video. These cameras are what a lot of people will be shooting raw video on in the near future. It's just the way forward, isn't it? <laughs> cool. Cool. Yeah, if you're not shooting log, you're just using a standard picture profile. Cine like 709, yes, it's going to take a little bit more to get your video looking right, but it is no more troublesome than shooting log. I mean, personally, I think it's even easier to get a better looking image than with a log file. But let's not make it out to be as simple as chucking a raw still in Photoshop. I mean, I'm still learning about the process of shooting raw video. Yeah, as I was saying, I'm not entirely sure if it's set up completely right because it's shown as black and white here. Now the reason why I was getting black and white was because of wrong setting, but what I was actually seeing was the pre debayered image. Debayering is an important part of viewing the raw image. But why exactly black and white? Well do bear with me for a minute because this bit is a little bit scientific, a little bit geeky, I'm not really that way inclined, so hopefully I get this bit right. Your sensor has lots of pixels, millions of them, and this picture ripped from Wikipedia just shows a few of them. In front of that is a colour filter where you've got your red, your green, and your blue. Separate ones for separate pixels. And in a 2x2 two two square you've got two green, one red, one blue. Apparently there's two green because your eyes are more sensitive to green. Not sure if I believe that. I distinctly remember wearing this green jumper on a snooker shoot. So as I said before, each pixel passes through just one colour, but the thing is you need a value of each red, green and blue per pixel to create a colour image. And that's where the clever tech fills in the missing information. Hence why I got a black and white image. So when you've got that, there needs to be a debayering process to create an RGB raster image, as it's called. Usually this bit happens in camera with your regular pre-cooked video. With RAW, it happens outside of the camera, which allows for cleaner, purer RAW data. Now the post-production stage seems pretty straightforward. Library properties, wide gamma HDR. Shot and log, and also RAW, this shot, not together because you can't record in camera and on the Atomos recorder at the same time with the Panasonic S1H. Exposed to the right a bit, exposure a bit brighter, so it looks like this when you first put it in Final Cut Pro. And without doing anything else, you can pull the highlight slider down and you can see how much you can get back from a raw image. Okay, but let's put the log conversion on it. Why would you go back to the log? Well, it might seem odd to go from raw back to log, but the thing is, log and raw and the same thing. Log has still baked in bits in it. It's almost a finished cookie, you just need to add some decorations on top to make it look pretty. Raw is the cookie dough itself, nothing has been added to mess up the recipe. If anybody's going to mess up the recipe, it's you. 
Anyway, enough of the cookie metaphors. As the raw data is untouched by in-camera processing such as noise reduction, it shouldn't be a huge surprise to see noise in your video. Quite noticeable when I shot with a Z6 in low light and also with Lux R5 8K raw shot in the shadows here. Now it should be the case that if you expose to the right and pull back on the exposure, you should get cleaner shadows. I can't tell you for certain with the R5 shot because I don't have the camera to hand. Interestingly though, although this shot has no noise reduction applied, that's not quite as sharp as I thought an 8K shot would be. But yeah, it's pre-production and I'm not testing the camera myself, so I just have to go by this only. Now I really like the S1H RAW video, 5.9K, apart from the crap AF, it really is the most underrated camera of the bunch. I say underrated, I mean underappreciated. It just doesn't get as much attention as the Canons. It's a formidable bit of kit, but I can't help but think that not many people will buy it based on a brand name alone. As I'm using the Atmos to record ProRes RAW, it just runs a lot smoother when I put it into Final Cut Pro compared to the EOS R5 8K RAW. At first, my computer didn't have too much problem with the R5's 8K, although once I applied noise reduction in Final Cut, it just kept crashing, which is bloody annoying when you're just trying to get going with the editing. And that's one thing you should consider when choosing which camera to go for for shooting RAW. For me, the ProRes RAW ends up working best for me because I use Final Cut Pro, but one thing is, the ProRes RAW HQ files end up being larger than Canon R5s. And that's 8K of course, but one annoying thing with the S1H setup is that you have to use an external monitor slash recorder. It's just so much more convenient to just have an all-in-one package that shoots RAW. Now looking at S1H RAW files and comparing that to in-camera 5.9K, it retains the details better, but again, a lot of the perks of shooting RAW is the tweakability, the colors, the exposure. And that brings me to another slight annoyance with the whole ProRes RAW Final Cut Pro workflow. Adjusting exposure is possible, but it doesn't detail the white balance it was shot at and the ISO as well, so it doesn't provide the same preciseness as some other RAW workflows. I'm not good at color grading or have much patience for getting the best out of pre-baked log files. With RAW, having more control on things like the color make it easier to grasp how to get it to look good. With RAW, it's easier to get better looking colors, but you will end up doing more in the processing and your software. So it still might not be the ideal workflow for somebody wanting to get videos out quickly. But if the image is more important than the turnaround time of your video, then RAW is definitely the way to go. And before I go, I'm just going to give another shout out to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of lessons, including this fantastic set by Six Street Under. His street photography is superb and it's insightful to gain an understanding of how he works and how this could work for you and improve your street photography. It's definitely worth checking out if you're into street or even if you're not. You can get full access to it and over 25,000 classes about photography, business, design and much more for less than $10 per month. Although you lovely people can get a two month free trial by using the link in the description box below. So go ahead and learn some stuff. Thanks for watching. See you again. Bye bye.